Welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Jim and uh, learn all of his story and find, and see his great camper. This is actually a camper I've been wanting to to shoot and to own for a long time. So let's we're going to learn all about it. So Jim, welcome to the channel. Hey, thank you for having me. Are you full time now? No, I'm transitioning into full time. <clears throat> I'm so, getting close. So you have a, a home base somewhere, right? Yeah, up up near Seattle. Up near and kind of snowbirding down for the winter. Well, I was thinking of coming down and um, looking at a different setup. And as I came down, I got confirmed that I have the right setup. I was going to um, build a box van, uh -huh. but I think this is a better setup for me. And so I came down just to get ideas. I've never been to the RTR, but I've followed it, and. I need I need to have time on the road also to practice so when I transition it's going to be smoother. You know, when you're out for a month or so, for me, that's helpful because there's different things that you do. I've spent a lot of nights in it, but you know, they've been a week here or or you know, sometimes two or three weeks, but this is the biggest chunk. And is the goal to go full-time or just the trips is what you're I want to go full-time. That's the plan. But, you know, we'll see what life does. That's the plan and I I have a I've taken all the steps. I think I I think I'm ready. I think I've I've made the move so I can do it and um so I'm I'm really excited. So really you're just in the shell of the truck. Uh is that big enough so far? It it's big enough for me, but I'm a carpenter and I have tools. And so I'm going to be purchasing a small utility trailer and be putting my tools in that. And also I'm going to put in a little um shower makeshift shower and a probably a composting toilet um, so when i have company and stuff i can get people to go with me and also when if i'm doing jobs i'm able to clean up so that's what i've decided to do to expand the size so i can live in it instead of doing a whole an entire new build with a box truck right so would the uh the, the toilet and the shower be in the trailer or? It'd in, be in the trailer, in the front in the of trailer. the trailer and then I'll have a wall and then I'll have tools in the back. All oh, right, so you got a bathroom basically That's in, the, right. in the trailer and right. a garage for the tools. Right, right. That'd be perfect. That's, I'm hoping so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so um, easy. Parks in a single parking spot, right. it's stealth and, uh, and the trailer's gonna be a little bit different, but I don't think it's, I think it's gonna work. So it's an eight. Looks like an eight foot box. It is. Uh, so you have you have a six by eight foot home. That's right. With a little storage over the the cab. That's correct. That's not much. No, and it's six foot wide. I made it. The, I'm you know that's determined by my length, so I can sleep crossways. It is not much. Uh, let me ask you about the shell because uh, these shells this tall, and it is a shell and not a slide in camper. That's right. It's mounted on the side rails of the truck. So you get the full six foot of the bed of the truck inside. You That's correct. Between the wheel wells, you get the whole six. I foot. get the whole thing. It's just that I had to build that out and insulate it. You know, it took a little bit of carpentry work to it do would. that. It would. That's right. a lot of curves. In that there. is. It's not. It's not a simple thing. No. But it turned out great. And um, these shells, tall shells like this, are really hard to find. Where did you get this one? Actually, I looked and looked, and then I found Bell Air Camper Shells down in Garden Grove, California, and they advertise that they'll make it any way you want. And and so I worked with them on that. I worked with it. I did a lot of drawing to come up with what I wanted and then I worked with them. I With these, since they're mounted on the side rails, you can't go as high as you'd like because you're ending up with a wind shear situation. It's not, whereas where a regular camper's mount slides in and all the weight transfers to the bed of the truck. Right. This transfers to the side rails. So, so I can't, I kept it a little lower than would be optimum. I have to stand just about like this, but that's to, um, to adjust, you know, just to be safe on the wind shear. And also right. I get great mileage with it. Yeah, that's fantastic. It must weigh next to nothing. It's, I think they told me 500 pounds. And you got that nice aerodynamics of it. Right, so right. So it just really, have you noticed a much drop in your uh, miles per gallon? Actually, it increased. It increased. Because I had a ladder rack and job side boxes. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, when I yeah. took that off and they, for some reason they've created a lot of turbulence, even yeah. though they weren't higher, um, I get 17 down the Central Valley. You know, I've gotten 17 three or four times. Um, that's in cruise control, keeping it under 65, you know, and then I get as low as 13 and a half if I'm driving on hills around Seattle, stop and go traffic. Right, sure. And one of the things that stands out to me right away is that you got side windows 
but they're up at the top. Right. That's I had to kind of unusual. I had to fight for that. I had to fight for the aerodynamic shape, and I had to fight for them to put the windows in. I finally told them to don't put any windows in. I didn't want windows, you know, where they took up space from what I could build out. And um, right. so I told him not to put windows in, and he finally said, oh, we can put windows in where you want them. Um, and it's great because I can see out, I can sit on my bed and see out the windows. Right. That's the key thing is that, you know, when they're down midway, which everyone puts them there, you can't, you have to right. get down there like that to look out. So I'm not sure. It might yeah. be the only one they've done that with. Uh, it's unusual. I know the, no stands out. the nose is the only one they've done like that. And it's incredibly stealthy. No one would think you were living in there. It just looks like a truck. No, shell. I put numbers. I put numbers on it, you know, to make it look, that's just to make it look like a company truck. Kind of camouflage. Right. Yeah. Right. And. And I'll park next to a um, construction company, or a lumber yard, or pretty much anywhere. You right. know, this. You know, and it's. I've never had a problem. <laughs> uh, I used to live in a shell exactly like this, except I home built it, and it was very, very heavy. Did you find that? Uh, I saw that before I designed right. mine, and I could spot. I'm a carpenter, and um, and I could see that was too heavy. It was. You know, just heavy. the framing and whatnot. Right. I'm not a carpenter. I I can frame something in pretty well. Sure. So I just framed in a two by four cabin sure. on top of my pickup and it was way too heavy. Right, and I also did the build out as lightweight as possible. Right, that's a huge thing. Right, so you just think of everything as like an airplane or something, right. as light as I could make it. That takes a lot more work. So I tried to keep the weight down and also I tried to keep all the weight below the, you know, for a low center of gravity. Really important. I'm a hiker. Right. And so I can get back into the trailheads with this. Right. And that's all that you, that you want is if you're hiking, you just want to be as far back as you reasonably can, then you walk. Right. In the Northwest, we have trees. That was the other reason why I'm like, okay, maybe I'll give up some space and not do the box van and do this. Yes. Because I can still go anywhere and maybe I can drop that trailer and still go. We'll see how that works. It, I'm sure it'll pay off because in the forest, in the dense forest, it's the it's the size of the RV as much as anything that stops you. Yes, it is. So it it's it looks really fantastic. Uh, do you mind if we go inside and no, take it, a look around, see what you've yeah, done? Come on in. All right, let's go do that, folks. Uh, so now we're inside, and um, and it's I love this. To me, this is perfect. But it does seem small. Can it hasn't hasn't been a problem for you? It oh no, it's, it hasn't been a problem for me. But however, I haven't lived in it full time. Right. It's not too small for going out. I kept, I kept it open. Very open. So when you're sitting right here, it looks much larger than when you're yes. standing where you're at. Tell us how a lot of the custom, you did a lot of customization right. uh, with them when you build it. How, tell us all about that. Okay, well I designed it so I could put the stove here mounted on the side rail. And so this, the stove mounts on the side rail and so that pushes the stove over to this side, which allows me more space on the other side. I wanted a three foot walkway so I can slide my table saw mm -hmm. in here. And so I, so I designed that and figured out the distance I needed for where I wanted the door. Right. And then I designed it for a refrigerator on this side. And I built this to fit a Domatech refrigerator that I have, but I never used it. I will okay. be I will be setting it up with solar. Right now, I super insulate an ice chest and it lasts me even in the desert a week. I've got shoes down here, tools in this one, and that's hats, gloves, and you know, that kind of type of stuff. Mm -hmm. I built this in later, so my dish, I can do all my cooking without having to get into things. Right. Because I put my dishes here. I built these cabinets for dishes. This is, you know, clean, that's, that's, you know, sprays. I have a vinegar water spray for sanitizing, um, you know, soap or just whatever, any odds and ends like that. This is where I keep paper towels and bags and Ziploc bags and things like of that nature. And then since this is sitting on the side rail here, I made cubbies for, this is, this is for my water mm -hmm. and my little propane canister, my fire extinguisher. This is like my, in backpacking, I'm an ultralight backpacker, so I have a Diddy bag. Mm -hmm. That's like this. This is just odds and ends. And so, for an ultralight backpacker, this is enormous. This is. And yeah. ultralight backpacking is why I may not need one. Is My ultra back, back, ultralight backpacking experience, you know, I carry a 10-pound pack, 11-pound pack. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to do that, all of those skills transfer over to this. Less is usually more. 
Mm -hmm. And I, so I don't think this is going to be too small for me. Well, and you add on a, a trailer, a five by trailer where you haul your- uh, A little lightweight trailer, right. Then you're, boy, you're golden. Man. I think so, I think I, yes. We'll see if I can fit, well, I'll fill it with tools. Right. <laughs> but I'm going to do that. One of the projects I have to do is to do the same thing with my tools and go through and get down to just the essentials. You right. know, get a smaller compressor, things of that nature. So I've got my silverware here. This, this opens up. Um, I'm, I just gained space on this trip by deciding to get rid of my little buddy heater. Right. I'm throwing it away. And I've got this guy that I made, that I, someone made. You put this on the burner. Oh, look at that. It'll drive you out of here. You and know, it, that's it'll, exactly it'll simmer what I do. It'll simmer down to almost nothing. And it'll, and it'll, I can heat this thing when it's down in the teens. I can heat this thing in about two or three minutes. I love that. If you commercially made that, I'd buy one right. from you right now. Well, I got it on Amazon as a heater and it came with just this. And then I added a storm collar, a chimney storm collar to it. So it'll catch the flame. Works beautifully. Yeah, that's It great. came from China. It took about five weeks to get. Oh. <laughs> and I, no, this is fantastic. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea. And it, the whole thing turns bright orange. It puts, it'll, it'll heat this thing up. I've had it down, you know, where the wind chill, it was at six degrees and no problem. Right, no, I can believe it. So I, then. I the, do the same thing. I heat with my, my, uh, my butane stove. And so what I do is then I'll ventilate and just pour more heat. Right. You know, right. uh, you got it. You can't take a risk with ventilation. You no, and I've got the carbon monoxide deal, and um, it has gone off on me a couple of times. And then you're open. You know, right. I'm yes. grateful for that piece of technology. I am before I go full time. I am going to remove a couple things and add some more insulation to the oh. to the Bel Air portion of this camper. Did it come with any? It's got it's got insulation in the walls, but it's minimal. It's not enough. The other thing I did was I added the window so I can come from the cab to the camper. Oh, you can. And that I do, I've, nice. I've done it dozens of times. That is nice. And so when I pull up and I don't want to be seen, I just want to pull up, turn off the lights and I look like somebody's parked and then I'm back here asleep. Mm -hmm. That's a small opening. <laughs> it is, yeah, but I'm a, you know, but you're I fit. A, you're a smaller guy. No, I fit. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. And then also if I'm urban camping and something's something that feel, doesn't feel right and I don't want to go out the door to get, I can slip into the cab and drive away. Right, that's oh, very nice. And this is my library here. Beyond, it hangs behind the seat. This is my bed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I see. So, you know, I, I pull out a book. Uh-huh, I pull that book. <laughs> yes, or, you know, John Muir or whatever. Right. You know, and, and then I put it away at night. That's right here. Right. Yeah, I don't have to have that. I'm able to use that as part of my living space. Or uh, well, if you're driving long and it's hot or cold, you leave, you're driving, you sure. have the sure. you open that and you're getting heat and air conditioning back in here. I too. am, I am. And I'm going to get one of those clip on fans from a truck stop so I can put, so I can use that. Right. And um, turn on the air conditioning and blow it back or turn yes. on the heat. That way, if I ever run out of propane, I've still got heat, you know, in a situation. Right. Um, but definitely you can preheat the place. Yes. And the bed's on a truss. I, I designed it. I used oak for the runner so they're strong so I didn't have to put a post in the middle. Mm -hmm. And also so I could keep it. I didn't want to raise the bed up too high by having to put, you know, heavy framing. Mm -hmm. And it keeps it low. It's, it's high enough. You can sit on it. Right. It's, you know, if you were to measure, it's just a little higher than a standard seat height in a chair, but it's, it's great. Right. And I've had three people in here. If I can get them to come in, once they come in, they go, oh, wow, this is great. Yeah. And usually if I go car camping with somebody and they're freezing their tails off outside, it's not hard to have them in for morning coffee. Right. And you got a lot of room up here on the overhead cab for storage. And I keep lightweight stuff up you there. You would only do that, yeah. Right. So this is where I keep blankets, sleeping bags, that type of stuff. Um, I moved it. Um, they put the light back in there. I asked them to move it out here, but they put it there. So I use a piece of Reflectix. Oh, yeah. To reflect it out. Sure. And then, you know, it's just my lightweight, lighter weight foods. And I have this for extra kitchen stuff. And then my heavier stuff goes under here. Because you got all the storage under the bed. I've got under, and it works pretty good. One thing that I learned, I have, I have 10 gallons of water, or 12 gallons of water under there. And in the Northwest, when it's cold out, that water it gets very, very cold. And when you heat up the camper, it doesn't warm up. Mm -hmm. And then it feels like it's hard to heat up the camper. 
because I've got the camper basically on ice, you know, with these right. jugs. So it's something that I've learned I need to, I need to deal with that, maybe move them to the cab or, or get, put them in an insulated thing so, they, so we don't have this big mass of cold in here when I, you know, in the winter time or carry less water in the winter. I mean, it's fun for me because I like things and I like solving problems, but there's a lot of things that you learn. It, you know, I'm not trying to be a house on wheels. I'm trying to be a home on wheels. And it, once you get away from that and say, no, wait a minute, I have a need. I have a need to be clean. I don't need a shower. I need to be clean. Um, you know, I just need to have certain objectives right. met. And then the sky's, it's fun. This netting was something I learned through the School of Hard Knocks. You know, after going down a 25 mile washboard road and having everything, yes. in, everything in these, uh, you know, this rack, I, I, des I designed this rack so it curves. So it holds small things and big things. Right. But I mean, still, I had a, I had a, it looked like an earthquake in a grocery store. Right. I think it's important to have everything open so it breathes, things dry out. Right. Yes, I agree completely. You know, and then if you've got air movement, I have not had a problem with any mold or mildew, and I'm in the Northwest where it's wet and cold and damp a lot. So you don't have the full height to stand, but it's it's not bad. No, I'm and five it's, foot. Yeah, it's five foot two. I, I end up I end up doing this because I like it. It's like a workout. I'm strengthening my calves and my right, quads. Right. So I'll do that sometimes. Other times I'm like, oh, I really wish it was taller. But everything is a compromise. Everything. In, in and life. and I think it's a I think it's a fine I think it's fine. And w with Bill Air, I was lucky. I was able to de determine the width. I was able to tell him, okay, this is how tall I am. I want to be able to lay a crossways in it. And so I've got six foot two inches across. That's good. And I'm going to decrease that by adding some in, some insulation in some spots. But still, I'll be I'll be at six feet. Right. And that's nice. I can still stretch my toes when I'm sleeping without having to sleep diagonally. Like I've got a narrow bed, which is great for me. But I also designed it so I can slide the bed all the way up to here, oh, and there's huh? room for two. This is glued to this, and then there's another one on the other side. But it slides like like this okay. and when it slides like that I put a, a rabbited edge on that side and then I cut these pieces they fit perfectly in there and I put these foam pads in and mm -hmm. I've got an air pad and I can make same covers and I've got a bed that comes to here you have a sink here mm -hmm. and a five gallon uh, fresh water I'm assuming no oh, no, no that's that's, your, the, that's, uh, gray. The, that's the drain that's the gray water right and then this you don't have to use your hands and you've right. got you know right that's a brilliant idea yeah. and, and I, I picked up this sink at ikea and i went to ikea because they use light gauge on their sink so it's easier for me to bend mm -hmm. and work with and you just bent that back uh, i cut it and bent it up. right and then this is all siliconed so when i put the dishes here and they drip everything runs into the sink oh how nice simple but elegant uh, simple it feels open it feels completely open i in fact, I think it feels more open than most vans I've been mm -hmm. in, which are usually six by 10. So you have less space than most vans, but it feels much more open. Right. I think a lot of it is a cab over. So the that roof helps. goes back further. The, right, that goes at back almost 30 inches. Eight foot would come to here. And right. so it goes another foot and a half just on the flat section of the roof. Right, so you don't have any solar yet. Um, I had it designed, I've already wired and I've got the outlets. And I've got my, my trunk system is going to be back in that corner. I just got to using it and I realized, wait a minute, I don't need it. The only thing I really needed it for was the refrigerator. And the ice keeps so darn long with me wrapping that in down and everything. Um, but I definitely will want to, you know, I've got a dome. I've got a really nice, fr you know, 12 volt fr refrigerator and I want to use it. And down here on this trip, I wished I would have had it. I like simple. And I think good design is about turning yourself inside out to make it look like you didn't do anything. When you walk away, at, you know, like the old Volkswagen Beetles. Yeah. You know, it, and you know that guy was a genius. Right. But, um, but so good, to me, that's good design. It's not a ton of bells and whistles. It's a lack of bells and whistles. I'm down here. I'm going to go to Slab City, maybe wake up in East Jesus tomorrow. Who knows? But I never had the freedom to do that. Right. Um, I go, I haven't bought a motel room since I built this. And I go on vacation and it's gas money and food. 
basically. But the, uh, the thing is, I, I go backpacking. Now I can go two, 300 miles from home and wake up there in the morning and get up and go. It's freedom. Right. It, it really is. Yeah, it's really freedom. Cool. And this lifestyle, I can see that. That's freedom. You know, living in a van, why wouldn't I? I, I have to. Yeah, no, it's it's really, a, the freedom is why it, it appeals to me and to so many people. We right. Just wanna, when I want to make a choice and go and do what I want to do, I want to go and do it. Right. And that's not a lazy thing, no. but you know, my gosh, take care of yourself and right. do what you want. Absolutely. So I've had a smile on my face for every time I get in this, I have a smile on my face. Right. And when I go out and I do it and I come home and I can't duplicate that smile in a house or an apartment. And so uh, how do you go to the bathroom and shower? I think we talked about that. I can hit this. And, uh, I know how to poop in the woods right. when I'm in the desert. If it's bad enough, I'll grab a tall kitchen bag and use that and then wrap it up. I will be putting a bathroom in my little utility the utility yeah. trailer. And that's, I won't be using it very often, but it'll be there. And that's mainly for urban, if I'm working on somebody's house or, or if I've got somebody going with me and they're squeamish about, you know, what I'm comfortable with, well, they'll have a composting toilet. Well, Jim, thank you so much for sharing your home with us. It's really fantastic. I love it. Thank you. And so, folks, there you have it. A, an amazing, uh, simple, but uh, elegant lifestyle. Uh, Bell Air Shells. We'll put the um, link down in the description. Bell Air Shells. And uh, thanks so much, Jim. Sure, sure. You're welcome. Welcome. I'm glad to share. Folks, if you got anything out of this video, and I know you did, like us on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button and we'll talk to you later.